Hello and welcome back to Machine Learning. I'm Javita Christie and in this video we are going to talk about two of the early neural network models. So let's begin. The first model we're going to talk about is the Macaulay Pitts model and this is very much like um, the model that we just um, saw. So this is um, this is a very basic mach uh, machine learning neural network model uh, that has some input values. And in this case, uh, the input signals are x1, x2, up to xn. And there are different weights associated, which are w1, uh, w2, and wn. So these are the weights um, associated with each of the input values. And this is uh, the summation junction which uh, does a sum of all these uh, inputs by multiplying them with the weights, respective weights. And when the sum is generated, uh, we apply the threshold function that we saw in the previous video. And uh, the threshold function uh, would either give you a zero or a one on the basis of uh, the input. So then you receive your output y. So this is how this model works. So if you look at it, it's just a very basic um, neural network with one layer of inputs, some weights, and one layer of output neurons. So this is how it's going to work. And you can solve a type of question with this, like this one. Uh, John carries an umbrella if it is raining or, sorry, if it is sunny or it's raining. So there are um, two things. John is going to carry an umbrella and he's going to carry an umbrella whether it's raining or whether it's sunny. So there are four situations that you need to consider to find out if John will carry the umbrella or not. And those four situations are these. The first situation is that it is not raining, nor is it sunny. Uh, the second situation is that it is not raining, but it is sunny. The third situation is that it is raining and it is not sunny. The fourth situation is a very strange one where it is raining and it's also sunny at the same time. So there are four situations and we need to find out if John is going to carry an umbrella or not based on these four situations. Now, basically, um, a neural network is used to answer questions that are much bigger than this, these questions. Uh, but in our case, because our neural network is um, a basic one, this is a very early model that was built a long time ago uh, when neural networks had just uh, you know, started uh, to come up as, as a concept. So that's why this, is, this model is using a very basic concept and is creating a very basic neural network to answer a very basic question. So to analyze these kinds of situations, we use the Macaulay pitts neural model uh, and we consider the input signals as follows. So we have X1 that asks the question, is it raining? X2 that asks the question, is it sunny? So the value of both X1 and X2 can either be zero or one zero x1 equal to zero means it is um, not raining x1 equal to one means it is raining x2 equal to zero means it is not sunny and x2 equal to one means it is sunny so the value of both x1 and x2 would uh, be either zero or one and um, we can use the value of both weights x1 and x2 as one and a threshold value of the activation function as one. So we know that the threshold function works on the basis of um, a threshold value theta. So we are keeping our threshold value as one, which means if it's one, then it's going to fire the neuron. And here is, uh, once again, this is the model. Uh, you have x1 and this is x2. Okay. And what are the different situations? The situation one is where it's neither raining nor sunny. So both x1 and x2 are zero. And the sum would be zero plus zero, which is zero. So 
based on the threshold function, zero is less than one because we decided the threshold to be one. So since zero is less than one, the output is going to be zero. Next um, situation is where um, it is not raining, but it is sunny. So x1 is zero, x2 is one. The sum of that is zero plus one, which is one. And this, this goes into the threshold function uh, where uh, because it's one or more, that is that was our threshold. So it's going to return to you one. The third situation is where um, it is raining, but it's not sunny. So you have x1 is equal to one, x2 equal to zero. Uh, the total is one. And because it's one and one is our threshold value for our threshold activation function, um, we will get as an output one. The fourth situation is the situation where it's raining and at the same time, it is sunny. So if you take the total of one and one, you get two. And because this is again going to the threshold function right here, the output will be one because for our threshold function, we have selected one as, um, one as the threshold value. So this is the truth table. And this is how this model works to answer a very simple question of whether or not John is going to carry the umbrella. Next, let's talk about Rosenblatt's perceptron. This is another early model, and it forms the basis of uh, perceptron learning, which is a very important part in um, neural networks. So Rosenblatt's perceptron is built around the mackerel pitts neural model. And perceptron is uh, receiving a set of inputs once again. So these inputs can be x1, x2, and so on up to xn. And there is again a linear combiner or adder uh, in the middle, which uh, takes all these uh, input signals and also applies to them the synaptic weights, uh, w1, w2, up to wn, and then adds all those. Uh, the Rosenblatt's perceptron or perceptron in general also has an extra element or component to it, which is the hard limiter, which is going to check if the resulting sum is positive or negative. So um, in the previous um, neural network, we had the threshold function, activation function, which was um, doing some work of um, assigning a, an output uh, to the given input. And here we have the hard limiter that is doing more or less the same kind of work. It's going to check if the sum is positive or negative. And if the input to the hard limiter is positive, then the output is going to be plus one. And uh, if the input to the hard limiter is negative, then the output is going to be minus one. So that's what uh, the hard limiter does. And here you have the diagram. So you can see there are several inputs, x0, x1, up to xn. Uh, each input has a weight associated with it, w0, w1, and so on up to wn. And all these weights and uh, synapses are multiplied and combined in the linear combiner, which means um, it's the equation where you take x0 plus w0 sorry, x0 into w0 plus x1 into w1 and so on. And then whatever is the answer to, to all these sums is passed on to the hard limiter. And the hard limiter is going to check if this sum is positive or negative. If it is positive, the output is one. If it's negative, the output is minus one. So that's what this uh, perceptron does. So this is built around um, the McCulloch Pitts uh, neural model. So it's almost the same. Uh, it uses the same principle. It receives a set of inputs, x1, x2, up to xn. There's a linear combiner. Uh, there's a hard limiter, OK? And hard limiter assigns plus 1 or minus 1. So that part is uh, now clear. Let's take a look at the formulas. So this is the formula for the hard limiter, OK? So what does uh, the input of the hard limiter say? Input is nothing but the sum of wi, xi. That would be the input to the hard limiter. Okay. 
Uh, the perceptron includes some weights, um, which is, uh, there is an extra weight, which is W0, which is attached to a dummy input X0. And X0 is always assigned the value one. Okay, so this is an additional weight W0, which is why instead of starting our I from one, we are going to start I from zero. Um, because of this uh, dummy weight that is assigned in the beginning, and uh, to this dummy weight, we are only going to assign um, x0, which is going to be with the value 1. So this is the equation. So slight modification. Previous equation had i equal to 1 to n. This equation has i equal to 0 to n. And the output that is generated by the expression is given by this expression right here. So you have... Um, Output plus one, if uh, the sum that is passed on to the hard limiter is greater than zero, and output minus one, if the sum passed on to the hard limiter is less than zero. And the objective of the perceptron is to classify a set of inputs into two classes, class C1 and class C2. So you can basically uh, perform classifications only into two classes in this. And it can be done using a very simple decision rule, which is uh, to assign inputs x0, x1, x2 up to xn to class 1. If the output of the perceptron is plus 1 and uh, to class uh, 2, if the output of the perceptron is minus 1. So if you have an n-dimensional signal space, that is a space for n input signals, x0, x1, x2 up to xn. Uh, then the simplest form of the perceptron will have two decision regions, which would be resembling two classes, which are separated by a hyperplane. And the hyperplane is again defined by this equation, this exact equation, um, and equating that with uh, zero. Now, therefore, for two input signals denoted by variables x1 and x2, the decision boundary is the same straight line of this form. So uh, this straight line looks like this. You have W0, X0 plus W1, X1 plus W2, X2 equal to 0. Um, you can modify this equation and make it W0 plus W1, X1 plus W2, X2 equal to 0 because we know that this is just a dummy weight, a dummy variable uh, whose value is considered to be 1. Um, so let's take an example of how this perceptron uh, works in practice. So for this, um, we are taking a perceptron that has the following synaptic weights. Um, the weights W0 is minus 2, W1 is 1 by 2, and W2 is 1 by 4. Uh, and the linear decision boundary will be formed like this. Um, so what you have is minus 2 plus 1 by 2 x1 plus 1 by 4 x2 is equal to 0. Or um, you could essentially, you know, change some of these values. That means um, there is a 2 over here, which you could take that side, um, and that would become a 2. And uh, you could also take this 1 by 4. Uh, sorry, you could, you could take out 1 by 4 as a common value, take it that side, and the modified equation would look like this. So what's happening here is... Um, you are multiplying basically uh, this equation by four. So if you multiply, you, you take your two that side. So it becomes one by two x1 plus one by four x2 equal to two. Multiply the equation by four. So if you multiply it by four, what do you get here? Four by two, which is two. So here you have two. Four by four, which is one. So here you have one. And here you had two. So multiply that by two four and becomes eight. So you could either use this equation or you could use this modified equation, whichever one you prefer. Okay, so what we are trying to say here is uh, that for any point x1 and x2 that lies above the decision boundary is going to be depicted as belonging to class one and whatever is below the decision boundary will be belonging to class two as depicted in this figure. So uh, this is your decision boundary uh, with 
So that cuts x at 4 and x2 at 8. And anything above this is class 1. Up below that is class 2. Okay, so let us examine this perceptron, uh, whether it's able to classify uh, certain points or not. Okay, so in our case, uh, we have a point P1 that is equal to 5 and 2. Point P2 that has minus 1 and 12, both are belonging to class C1. And we have a point 3 that is 3 and minus 5. Point 4 that is minus 2 and minus 1, uh, both belonging to class C2. So let's take a look at the calculations. First, let's calculate the hard limiter uh, value input. So using the equation minus 2 plus 1 by 2, 1 by 4, you know, that equation, putting the values of x1 and x2 gives us 1 for point 1, gives us point 0.5 for point 2. For the third point, it gives us 1.75. 1, 1 for the fourth point, it gives us minus 3.25. So these two values are negative, which means um, the output of our threshold um, uh, function is going to be 0 and 0. Um, uh, the hard, output of the hard limiter is going to be 0 and 0, because if you pass a negative input, it is going to give you a 0 as an output. And if you pass a positive value, uh, you're going to get 1 as an output. So this belongs to class 1. This belongs to class 2. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Thank you.